Hey, hey, fellow YouTubers, JJ the Trucker coming to you from Springfield, Missouri. And just wanted to give you guys a tour of my brand new truck. No, not this one. This is the truck I'm turning in. This is my Freightliner, Freightliner Cascadia. That one is getting turned in. And this time I'm going with the Peterbilt 579 Ultraloft. It is brand new. It's the 2021. This thing is sweet. Cannot wait to show you around. But guess what? I've only ever driven Freightliners. I have never driven a Peterbilt. But this guy right here, Lyle, with no hippie trucking and transport, he knows Peterbilts. He's driven a couple of them. In fact, just a couple days ago, he picked up his brand new 2021 Ultraloft. And man, that thing is nice looking. Uh, so be sure to check out Lyle's channel, No Hippie Trucking and Transport. The link is right there up above arrows pointing to it you see that right there make sure to check out his channel he's got some great content and Lyle you know what I gotta say Lyle you were one of my first regular commenters on YouTube when my channel started over a year ago so thank you very much and I'm just now over a year from there finally getting to meet you this is awesome we uh, had dinner last night at fire and ice man that was, that was fire too. Dinner. that was some good dinner so you know what, I am absolutely honored to have Lyle giving us the tour of my brand new Peterbilt. I am very thankful. Thank you very much, man. You rock. Welcome right. to Team Peterbilt. You know what's up, it's all about that Pete. So let's just take a look. What I'm gonna do is just kind of go through his, kind of do a walk around on his truck and point out some of the things that I like most about this Peterbilt. Right on, let's, let's do it. Look. All right. Well, obviously. You have the elegant design to start with right off the bat. So his truck obviously has the visor, but the, the visor is going to be standard in the Peterbilt. So it's just going to give you a little something extra right there. There you go. And the uh, the grill. So check this out. This one, I will tell, tell you this uh, this Peterbilt is the standard option. I did not get to customize anything on this one. So this is standard directly from Peterbilt. Uh, the grill, I would have ordered it black, and I am looking into getting it black. Uh, it's the black outside and the black screen. I think that would go really nice with the color and the design. I don't know if you have fog lights on yours, but these actually are better fog lights. Give you a little bit more uh, visibility at night than the ones that I remember having in the Freightliner that I was driving. So that's one thing I like about this. Good, well. good. Right on. Uh, the headlights are not HIDs on this one, uh, but I am going to get that upgraded later to the HIDs. Alright, got my logos on there. Yeah. That's a nice logo. Now here's where you're going to start getting into some of the differences. Some of the obvious differences. If you're fueling up in a Peterbilt, you're going to have to pull up in that fuel island a little bit further. Because the fuel tanks are a little bit further back. And we'll kind of get to that as we go around. Now, one of the things I like most about this Peterbilt is this big side door right here. Ooh, look at that thing. Yeah, I've already used it, putting some, some stuff in it, and man, it is convenient. So you go grocery shopping, open up the door, throw your groceries in here, walk around front, everything's on your bump. So definitely something that I like about this Peterbilt. All right. So I noticed you put your, D your DEF in way up here. But there's no fuel tank right here. No fuel tank cap like there is in the Freightliner. So where do you put the fuel in? Well, first of all, sometimes where that, the distance between that diff and that fuel tank can be a little bit uh, difficult depending on where you're actually getting your fuel in. Sometimes you end up having to back your truck or pull your truck forward. Sometimes you have to adjust it one way or another. Uh, just based on where your fuel tanks are. But your fuel tanks are going to be right back here behind the truck. Oh, look at that. So I'm going to go ahead and get in on that. All right, so you've got the fuel tank over here instead of on the side. And I've heard a couple of different reasons for that, a couple of benefits. Uh, on the freight liners, even though I didn't have this issue, I know a lot of people had the issue to where it was at an angle to where the, the, fuel, tank, you know, the, uh, the fuel pump kept falling out. You'd have to bungee it in. Here, you're pretty much going in right on top of the tank so it, it doesn't fall out. And then since we're back here, one of the other obvious advantages to this field or to this Peterbilt is this K2 
catwalk, and this is a real catwalk, you can actually really get up on this when there's a trailer hooked up to this. So when I had when I was driving a uh, freight liner with my uh, trainer, the reefer would come up so far. Man. Well, even if you just look at yours. This catwalk goes all the way back here where yours is just like that little Yeah, look at that. Of... Look at that catwalk right over there. Little little teeny tiny little platform. I'd have to just shimmy up there and yeah, not too good over there. But yeah, look at this real catwalk. Nice extended wheelbase right here. Not technically an extended wheelbase, but compared to the uh to the freight line, I mean, look at that. Look at that difference. Man, that is nice. Now, another thing about these Peterbilts is you're going to have that really smooth ride now part of that i think is because the wheelbase is a little bit longer and then the other part is the suspension system is is a little bit different on this you have these uh u-joints or whatever you want to call them i don't, I don't know this exact yeah that's a different those. kind of a leaf spring that's for sure but you have those nice up here and in the back there so yep right on very nice and he hasn't driven this thing yet i can tell you that that is going to be one of the best things about this Peterbilt is the ride. And you know, that is the main reason I chose to go with Peterbilt this time around is because that thing right there, that freight liner, they call it a freight shaker for a reason. It should be called a driver shaker. That thing is a rough ride. I've heard nothing but great things about the ride on the Peterbilt. I'm excited and can't wait to, to take it out for a spin. All right, so you will see duels on this thing where you saw super singles on my last truck. You know what? First of all, I know you're gonna. I'm gonna get all the comments on this because I'm going through the the lease purchase. Sorry, I know it's loud out here. Because I'm going through the lease purchase with Success Leasing, they will put the Super Singles on here. Uh, there's no option for the duels at all, so they will take that off. I do not have a choice. So please, no comments on that. But here's the thing: I've not had a single issue with Super Singles. No blowouts no issues at all no issues with traction no issues with the the ruts on uh you know down in arizona highways nothing like that i've not had a single issue i did want to try out the, the duels just to try them out to have a comparison but i'm not really disappointed that i'm getting the super singles i've had nothing but good luck with those things another thing about this catwalk being a real catwalk getting up and getting them load locks 10 times easier oh man yeah and the way they did the load locks on the uh, on the Freightliner, the load lock pin, what you have to unlock is on, you can see that, where to go here? There you go, it's on this side over here. Whereas, you know, you're, you're standing over here, you gotta reach over, it is a pain in the butt. Over here, it's a, uh, they had the common sense to put it on the other side so as you're standing there on the catwalk it's right there within your reach that is really nice you got your second tank here uh, this one has dual 100 gallon fuel tanks all right uh, adjustable fifth wheel by the way air ride suspension for the uh, for the cab it's really nice Another super nice thing about this truck is you have this other door on the side. Now, if you were to look inside of this, this goes all the way through. So in the winter time, I would actually put like a real shovel, like not a little collapsible shovel, I'd put a real shovel back here and it would just slide all the way through. That is a good idea. On the freight liners, it's divided into three different sections. So you get a little section on this side, a little section on the other side, and in the middle section, you have to lift the bunk. And in the, the freight liner, if you get a larger or thicker mattress, you can't lift that bunk. It's a pain in the butt. All right, nice big windows too. Much bigger windows uh, on both the top and bottom compared to the uh, freight liner Cascadia right there. I do believe right. this is already piped in to have if you happen to be a trainer running teams, I'm pretty sure mine had it. I'm not 100% sure, but this should have the air and heat already piped in up to that It does. Level. It does. And so, we're going to see that uh, once we get in. So, this have that? Uh, it had one little tiny th little vent going up to the top level. This has two vents, two good sized vents, much better air circulation. All right. Let's go ahead and. Uh, oh. Oh, we're not so done. We got those antennas that are already built in. So. 
you get a CB, you don't have to worry about getting those CBs attached to your or the antennas hooked to your mirror. Right, because that's, like that, that's so. terrible. These dual antennas, one on this side, one on the driver's side. Very nice. All right. Uh, the mirrors are adjustable and heated. At least the top one's adjustable. The bottom one you got to manually adjust. Uh, but they are heated mirrors, which is really nice. All right. Shall we head on inside? Yeah. All right, look at that. Oh, that logo. Oh, so much nicer and so big. I was able to get the dragons also on the door. Man, this is Ramoth over here. The other side is Nimeth. If you understand the reference, please comment below. All right, let's go ahead and head on in, shall we? All right. All right, so the first thing that I would notice when I come in here is just the appointments of it is more car-like. It actually has more of a Cadillac feel to it or a high-end luxury vehicle feeling than uh, your yeah. typical. Look at that, wood grain. Nice. I did get the cloth seats because it is the basic model, but you know what? I would have asked for them anyway. I am not a fan of leather or pleather or vinyl, nothing like that. Because that stuff is just makes you sweat. Standard navigation, that's another thing. So yeah. what I do when I start, uh, you know what, let's, I'm going to start it real quick. Cause... So anyway, you have the standard navigation in it. Uh, I don't remember if the Freightliner has for the CB. Yeah, Freightliner has a much bigger area for the CB, I will say that. Uh, this has a little tiny area for the CB. I hope the CB I got fits in that thing. I got the one from the uh, from the Prime store. Right over here we've got the uh, the tire pressure monitoring system. Compliments of Prime. That thing uh, works very well. <laughs> it really does. So you are giving up some storage up here because you don't have that yeah. trough or whatever that Man, this, comes across there. this is the one downside about the Peterbilt that I can see is uh, let's turn that air down a little bit here. Let me turn the air down back here too a little. Alright. Uh, so yeah, in the Freightliner, there is so much more storage space, and we're gonna get into storage here in a little bit. But yeah, talking about the front, at the Freightliner up here is a big old trough, literally where you can just put stuff all in there. You got storage cabinets that are much bigger, you know, so there's a lot of space missing. Uh, even these storage cabinets on the side, they're pretty nice. Not nearly as big as the, uh, the Freightliners. But what you do get, that you don't get on the Freightliner, while I'm sitting over here, a glove box. Yeah, the 2018 and a half models 2019 2020 models they got rid of the glove box so here you get a glove box and look at that a little tray a little meal tray for anybody sitting in the passenger seat they can they can eat here they can do paperwork they can do whatever put their laptop on there Very nice so here's how i kind of trip plan so what i'll do is the first thing and this would apply to anybody that doesn't want to run even another GPS. I don't even think you use a Qualcomm, do you? I don't use Qualcomm, right, but so I use Nagata, you know, my uh, my Garmin so GPS. So basically you put an address in, and I'm just gonna do a little short, actually. I'm just gonna do a short little demo. So since I'm headed to Carson, California, I'm just gonna put, you know, Carson. All right. Let me just put Los Angeles. Carson, O-N, C-A-R-S-O-N. I actually grew up there, by the way. So I thought I had. Okay, so Carson, California. You can put in the address, but what it's going to do is it's going to give you a route. And again, this is standard. and also has points of interest, things like that. So here's the route it's suggesting right off the bat. You can also click alt alternates, which would come in handy during the winter time, especially. And it's going to give you three different... It's calculating the... Uh, especially if you don't want to take 70 through Denver. Uh, no, I'll take I'll take 40, thank you. So it's, gonna, it's, it's basically going to show you three routes. So let's say that uh, now it says the best route is the green route, which is the route I'm going to take anyway. But let's say for some reason there was some wildfires going on in Albuquerque, then boom, I, I already know. Just yeah, you already know that. that. I, that I already know I would go alternate three. Yeah. <laughs> just to avoid or that. whatever. Just so, so I mean, this but is, no, that is nice. That is really nice. It gives you uh, alternate routes. That's cool. 
Um, and it does play over the speaker system as well, which is really nice. A small thing that I think is awesome is this leather wrapped steering wheel. Yeah. I mean, this is a small thing, but it makes me feel like I'm driving my my car or my truck, whatever. So I think this is awesome. Uh, you know, I think the gauges are just a little bit, they don't look as toyish, I guess. Yeah. So, ch so check this out. This actually has the temperatures on it right now. Uh, so you can actually set the temp uh, that you want and it'll it'll adjust it to that temperature. You know what? I don't get that specific. I just put it up. Well, here's the problem with mine. My discs broke on mine. So this is the only disc I have. So I just put it on. You know, I know this is defrost on this side all the way to feet, but I don't really... Like I said, I don't have this on mine. For some reason, mine cracked on both of these. So that might be a design flaw if it cracks in my next one. Okay. Well, let's hope not. Let's hope not. All right. So we got our brakes here. Uh, go ahead and push that pedal to prevent us from shutting down. All right. Um, you want me to turn it off? No, no. Let's keep it going. It's nice and cool with this, this AC. The cup on. holders. So that's mm. another thing that I'm not a huge fan of as opposed to the Freightliner that has the kind of built-in things. These things will start kind of rattling when you're driving. Yeah, the Freightliners are built-in, definitely have a lot more space on the on the dash for stuff. Um, I do like it actually has an area for your cell phone though. That's pretty nice, uh, whereas the Freightliner doesn't really have that. Also comes with an actual ashtray if That's you a are a smoker. Holder. Oh, a change holder, is that what that is? No, I mean, it can be. It can be. If you're but not that's, smoking. Yeah, if you're not smoking. There. there you go. There you go. Or, just take it out and guess what? There's your cup holder. I do like that it has that option, because I know there's a lot of smokers out there. But, uh, yeah, it's not bad. But, yeah, we'll see if it starts rattling. Hopefully, there's a solution to that. Let's uh, see, so we got our uh, load scale on there the right way. That is nice. Um, love having that on there. Man, that makes a big difference, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think I've scaled twice the whole time I was at Prime. Yeah, same here. This helps. Got the red emergency button. If we push that, it notifies Prime that there is something big going on and, and to, uh, you know, contact, try and contact you or, or start taking some action. Let's see, what do we got over here? Uh, sliding fifth wheel air dump for your, to lower your airbags. And this is something that a lot of people don't use. That's your interlocking axle, so if you're in some bad weather, you can turn that on while you're driving. I uh, believe that you don't want to be going more than 25 miles an hour you, when you engage that. There you go. Right on. And then this is going to keep your tires for, you know, you well, you could turn this off. So it's going to use kind of a, something, that, it's this kind of an anti-skid thing, but sometimes if you're trying to get out of mud, you're going to want your tires to keep going. So that would disengage that yep good traction control and we got the hill start assist man the hill I've start never, assist I've never used that. really oh so the hill start assist in the freightliner the pain in the butt i mean it works great if you are on a hill in traffic and you need to go it gives you a couple seconds where it it keeps the brakes on for you when you take your foot off the brakes um but when you're trying to park Man, that thing just keeps <laughs> keeps you know engaging and, and making it tough to, to park sometimes or get into a tight spot. Turning that off really, really helps. Uh, here we got the Bendex system, which is your lane departure control warnings. Uh, if, when we started the truck, you heard that those two rumbles, you know, <clears throat> that's uh, the lane departure thing starting up. Uh, what we got here? We got a person sleeping? Yeah. If you want to wake them up, you hit that button, it'll turn on your rear lights, your sleeper go. lights. <laughs> there you go. And then what? what's that? What's that right there? Your DEF or your DPF. Basically, it's your. it'll regen your truck. It'll either start it manually or stop it if it starts and you don't want it to continue going. Right on. Now, I haven't had to use that one time, uh, obviously, because my truck only had 160,000 miles on it when I turned it in so i'd never had any issues with that all right cool let's go back to this system right here there's more to the nav more to this than the just the navigation i've noticed right all right so you have you have a calculator you can if you have wi-fi you can use this like an internet 
So I can surf the internet while I'm driving? Is that what you're saying? No, but if you have a hotspot, I guess you could... Well, it, it, it probably won't let you do it because you can't even add an address in if you're... If your parking brake's not engaged, so I don't think you could do it when you're driving. But if you're at a truck stop and they have Wi-Fi, you could hop on here. I haven't done that at all. All right. What else we got? There's a bunch of different apps in there. Facebook, YouTube, Amazon, Wikipedia, Twitter. You could add some stuff on there. Not bad. So good Firefox browser. All right. Outside of the browser, what else we got? Roadside assistance, sound recorder, calculator, gallery. <laughs> Man, it's kind of like a phone. Just so you right can't in. hook your phone up to Bluetooth and it will answer it on. You can't answer it on here. Like your messages? Your text messages? Well, if somebody calls you, this will ring. Oh, okay. And then you so just got touch the phone. it. Then you just touch it and it'll pick up the phone. And I believe, and that's what this speaker's for. Like, I, I don't use that because the, the call qual. The call quality is not that good on it. I tried it one time. Okay. I don't see that. All right. Let's see. The audio options I noticed were pretty good. Yeah, now there is a big sub subwoofer in the, in the, uh, under the bunk. I'm not exactly, I think it's a 15 inch subwoofer. Subwoofer, I'm not 100% sure, but. Nice. Uh, it does sound good, especially if you want to raise that bed up a little bit sometimes you don't get the full quality of the sound with the bunk down obviously because well, i'm gonna the sound have to test can't that out <laughs> look at that you got weather channel sirius xm fm am uh different media options i've noticed you can do um radio sources rear aux bluetooth regular aux cd usb it's a nice stereo so system get some pandora hooked up to the bluetooth and have that running there you go right on yeah, or much YouTube. better, much better than the uh, than the the Freightliner radio. That, that man, that was one of my pet peeves was that radio. Terrible. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Nav, oh, we got the navigation. Well, you got gauges. Gauges. Too, so. so there you go. Look at that. All digital gauges. We got. Uh, we got oil temp, uh, manifold, DEF status, amps torque uh, mpg rating nice so if you click on it a lot you know so obviously the truck hasn't been run yet but it would tell you how clogged up your deep you know dpf system is at any given time and this hasn't been written this hasn't ran long enough to give you an average mile per gallon but that's where you get that as well so just click on whatever you want the information on nice we also got the actual stereo here so you can use the controls down there volume and all that stuff night mode day mode pretty nice all right uh dash brightness display right there yep uh explain this thing right here this knob what is that for this yeah so standard with prime you're gonna have a system where you have to enter a code to start the truck and that's usually on a keypad or something like that what the uh, Peterbilt has from the factory is well that's it. it may not do it it may just start up right away um, wait but what it'll do is you just enter your code using this right here as opposed to punching it so for example, my code on my truck. Yeah, it's well, the collision avoidance or the uh, the Vindex lane departure warning. All right, so it's not going to show it right now unless we leave the truck off for a little bit. Okay. But yeah, no, it's no. going to start. All right. So we'll basically, you just enter the code. We can get back to that. Okay. Um, I will say not as convenient as the keypad. Keypad, you just punch the code in real quick and you and you go. This you got to. But the alarm's not going off. Dial, all the time dial, if dial. You put the wrong code in. True. It just won't start. But this one, you gotta, you know, turn the dial, turn, 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 press, turn, 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 press, turn, 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 press, turn, 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 press. That's a pretty easy code. I have a fairly easy code. I think, as far as the turn it goes. You know, but but still, not as convenient. But what is convenient is you can put the key all the way into the the into the start position without having to enter the code. Right. Whereas on the the Freightliner, 
if you wanted to roll down your windows, if you wanted to, re, you know, get your Qualcomm started back up, anything like that, you had to put the code in just to get the key over there, which is a bummer. All right, let's go ahead and start it back up. Yeah, you have to wait on this one too. Just personally to you, what they're saying is don't turn it on until that until that light goes out. Okay. There you go. Enter unlock code. Now, I'm not going to show you my unlock code for obviously obvious reasons, but so if you just you want to put it over there so they can at least see what it is. I'll put the wrong code in. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if we were going to start this, and this code was four four five seven. Once this would turn green, then we would just uh, turn the ignition all the way to the right, and the, and the truck would stop. So yeah. right. that's kind of how that works. All right, go ahead and put the right code in now, and I will uh, show the seat. Look at that! Isn't that a beautiful seat right there? I think I remember it. That's one thing. Now these covers right here, the Freightliners, don't come with that unless it is the level three high-end, really super expensive seat. These covers come standard on the Peterbilts, which is nice. All right. Um, gauges and whatnot, all that's the steering wheel stuff. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, so gauges, pretty basic on the gauges. We got uh, coolant temp, uh, DEF levels, fuel level, uh, tack. What are these three uh, green dots for? Uh, that's. That just tells you where your optimum fuel mileage is if you keep the RPMs in that range. There you go. I would not have done that. Nope, not at all. Not at all. You just had to know 1200, 11 to 1200 was optimal. But all right, that's a good, good little indicator. Uh, you got your speedometer. Let's see over here. We've got um, secondary airbags, primary air, not airbags, air tanks. Secondary and primary air tanks, oil pressure. Let's see in the middle. We got our uh, clock, number of miles, temperature outside, what gear we're in. All right, so the gear selector. Let's talk about that for a little bit here. Come on yeah. up and, and tell me, tell us about this gear selector. Uh, as far as the gear selector goes, I mean, you know, you twist it up for drive, back for. Uh, reverse, you but you can All also right. go manual. So this little button at the end of the gear selector, if you push that, you can manually select your gears. I haven't had occasion to really do that personally. It seems to always do well in, uh, in right. auto mode. And then you're also going to have your four levels of Jake Brake. Four levels. On this. So if you just push this down, that's going to engage your Jake Brakes. You're going to see it show up on your dash as to what level you're which is really nice show, it's not going to show max since it's not moving but there's a max level after that yeah so on the Freightliner you only get the three levels and you only get one indicator so as you're going along you don't know you just have to remember which level you put it in here it'll tell you if you're in one two or three and then the max to get the max which is also not on the Freightliner you just got to hold it down man definitely want to try Actually, that all you need to do is <clears throat> Unless it's changed from mine, all you gotta do is push it down that one more time. Oh, okay. It'll hold, so you don't need to have it actually pulled down for it to be in max. Nice. All right. And then over here we've got the uh, the lights and the wipers. Very basic, standard for, uh, compared to a car. Now, now if you want to give the blinky blink to the trucks that are that you pass to thank them. There's a button on the end of that that you push in, and you need to push that in for each time you want your lights to blink. Okay, but n not this button here. Yeah, that button. No, this this button is. Uh, oh, it is. Okay, so so then what's this saying? The washer fluid push in. Well, that's this whole thing. That's one thing I don't like about it. Okay, so if you push this whole thing in, you get the washer fluid. But if you just push this. Yeah. Okay. So sometimes that's a little pushing that whole thing in is a little. That's, that's one thing I'm not 100% in love with on it. Okay. Um, another thing is if you push this down, it'll also dim your lights, which is really cool. And it shows up on the uh, on the dash, too. 
but you got to hold it down you can't just do one of those or else it just won't work you got to I tested that out yesterday uh, other than that uh, basic lights um, brights brights off I don't like that you just can't flash somebody you have to turn the brights on and turn them back off I usually just turn the lights off so if you push that handle forward, it'll turn your lights off. No, I mean like if somebody cuts you off and you want to flash them. Oh. <laughs> you're, you're like, oh, you idiot, you cut me off. You got to do it twice. That's all right. And then, uh, yeah, the wipers, you know, I'm not going to turn them on right now. I don't want to get the truck all dirty. Um, all right, so these I really like over here. This is pretty cool. On the freight liner, these two buttons right here are in the middle of the dash. But this is your utility lights on the back of the uh, on the back of the cab, uh, showing you know so where you if you're hooking up your trailer at night, you can just uh, hit that. Your utility lights are on, and uh, these are the uh, fog lights, which uh, you can leave those turned on uh, if you want. Once you turn the lights, those lights right here. Once you turn the lights on and off, they will turn on and off automatically. Uh, but this right here is the light test. Uh, so you are gonna go ahead and do your pre-trip. You just hit that right there and it's gonna cycle all the lights for you, which is really cool. Um, you don't have to climb back into the truck to do that, which is nice. Got your hazard lights. And what, what's this right here? What's that one? You know, to be honest with you, <laughs> I don't know. All right, I think it is for. Ah, yes. Oh, all right. So that. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. That 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 button looks different than the, than my current truck. So there you yeah. go. It, it's a dome light. And you also you you also have these that you so these are independent. Nice, and you got that on the uh, driver's side too. You can reach right here and just boom, got yourself a light that is not shining in your face, which is nice. Well, you can shine in your face if you want. Yeah, you can, but I don't recommend it. Right. Back here's where all the magic happens. Oh, uh, we're not there yet. We got a <laughs> no, steering wheel sure. controls here. Oh, that's nice too. Man, yeah, it sure that. is. I'm sure. So you got the uh, the mute button. That is really helpful. On the Freightliner, you don't have that. You got to just turn that knob like four or five times to get the volume all the way down. Pain in the butt. So you got the mute. You got mode change. Seek up and down. Volume up and down. Man, that is really nice. I'm looking forward to that. Over here, what are these, cruise control? Yeah, cruise control. So you got your on, off, your cancel, set, resume, and what, speed up and down? Yeah, I mean, it says, I mean, you want to turn it on first, obviously, but after that, you can just, instead of hitting set, you can just hit the up or down button, and it'll automatically either start going up or down. So normally what I would do would be... Uh, just hitting the plus sign if I'm coming on a ramp or coming onto the highway until it hits the 65 mile an hour maximum. There you go. All right, so that is about it for here. I mean, basic standard stuff here, mirror adjustment. Oh, this is another feature that I like compared to the uh, the Freightliner. Freightliner tried something different. I think it was a big fail. Um, they took away the left-right switch. They put a button there instead, and so if you're trying to blindside park and you got to be constantly adjusting that mirror uh, you know a little bit here a little bit there you'd hit the button you'd make your adjustments and then that button would turn itself off after like a couple seconds so you're sitting there you're trying to drive you're not paying attention now you're paying attention over here you're doing your parking and everything and you try and move your fingers over there and it's not doing anything you know and you get ticked off because then you have to come back hit the button again and do it it was a pain in the butt this one stays left or right it's nice uh, you got the windows only the driver's side is auto all the way down though passenger is not auto all the way down and neither of them are auto all the way up all right anything else to talk about from the driver's seat I think you've been about as detailed as you could be with this. Woo, all right. Oh, uh, we do get the privacy curtains. Oh, well, yeah. So I was going to say that when you're talking. All right. So these are standard. So some Freightliners would have them, some wouldn't. But that's going to be standard. Yeah, I had to buy mine separate when I got mine. So, yep, standard privacy curtains goes all the way around the front. There's one on this side, one on that side. Magnetic closures. 
much better than Velcro. And it's thicker. So if you happen to be teaming, this material is thicker, I believe. There you go. So you do got the, uh, you have the, the mid curtain as well. Goes across the, uh, the middle of the, the cabin. Also the magnetic closure. All right. All right, so you're losing a little bit of space back here. It's, it's a little bit. In to the Freightliner, but this is open right here. What I do is I keep like these, they're kind of like little buckets in here that kind of give, because this is only about an inch and a half deep right here. So I'll have like some buckets that might come up to about here to store things in. And then for, if, you, if you're running with a partner, uh, you have like this, the outlet that you could use to plug in phones, you know, whatever you need to. Go ahead and turn that light, the light on. Uh, no, not, yeah, that one down there. Yeah, that one, there we go. All right, so yeah, it does have a cigarette lighter outlet, um, which is, if you have a CPAP machine, that's actually a good, that, that's what this little area is designed for, is a CPAP machine for the, uh, the person up top. It's got the cigarette lighter in there for it to plug into and everything. Okay. Or they can uh, just plug their phone in. It's got this uh, tray. Cup holders. Peter or the Freightliners had no cup holders in the back anywhere. So there's a cup holder and here. See, I've tray. never even looked up there on mine. I had no occasion to. Yeah, and it removes too. Uh, you, don't but want you have the independent light up there as well. There you go, independent light right there. Right. Below this microwave, so you have, you have a built-in strap already to strap your microwave down. Plus, you have another outlet, cigarette outlet, uh, back here. I thought there was two, but there's one there in case you have a microwave that would plug into something like that. If not, you don't have your inverter or your APU hooked up. No, nope, I don't have the inverter or the APU yet, but the inverter would be right there. So you just run the cord. Would, well, the inverter would be right. Is that where you put it? Yeah, they're gonna put it right there. Yeah. And the APU, uh, the APU uh, controls controls be right here. Okay. Now this is nice. I don't remember what the Freightliner had as opposed to that, but you have uh, this little thing with shelves and stuff like that. So what I'll do is I'll, you know, you could use it for whatever you want, but I use this for my uh, air fresheners and whatnot. Yeah, good little pantry too. You yeah, know, good little pantry area. Right These on. cup holders come in handy as well. No kidding. I cannot tell you how many times I have spilled a bottle because I forgot it, you know, sitting on top of my refrigerator and uh, and started moving the truck. Man. Now I have no idea what this is supposed to accomplish. That That's is... That's why I see the light. Yeah. But there ain't no light. I mean, when it... When it I can't even tell that thing is on, but... Even at night? Even at night. Okay, because I noticed there's a light, a little tiny yeah. light there, and then a couple up there, you know. But, yeah, I was, I was going to wait to Yeah, you're going to have to tell night. me if that actually works for you. All right. A tray. One of my favorite things, trip sheets, seals, comp checks, whatever you can put in here, pencils, pens, and you could use it to eat. Yep, he uses this little table. This is one of my favorite things. I, I believe that the older Freightliners had it, but in the new model, they took them out. Did you see? Got the little bucket with it? Yeah. Got a little... I, did, I, I, I didn't even know that was coming with it. I actually was looking for another bucket that size. There you go. To go in the bottom, but there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of those go in there pretty deep. I've had stuff yeah. in there so deep that I forgot about it. <laughs> so go. I got like two packs of ramen noodles I didn't even know I had. Oh man. So, I mean, you do get some storage there. Find, find a pack of ramen noodles back there. It's kind of like finding a, a 20 in your, uh, in your in your coat pocket, you know, yeah, next, next winter. Definitely a 12 pack. <laughs> now, are you getting the regular fridge? So what I'm going to be doing is, so this is the major downside for me. This is the fridge compartment. Uh, Compared to the Freightliner where you get an open space, this you have to put the tiny little fridge in. I'm a fresh food eater. I need more fridge space than that, so I'm going to have them remove this seat, put a pan there, and some straps, and I'm gonna be running two fridges. So I'm gonna have the little fridge and my big fridge. Look at that. I 
comes in handy too. There you go, nice little tray. Might be able to fit my vacuum in there, that'll be nice. Oh, you see I've got the 32 inch TV. I'm getting that 32 inch put in. Yep. This is nice. I wish there was a light in there, but that's all right. Yeah. I, I don't have the bar. Yeah, that's what I was just noticing. Let me uh, turn the light on here. Oh. So there's supposed to be a, a bar in there. This is your closet, by the way. There's supposed to be a bar right in there. Not sure where that is, but I'm, I'll, I'll make sure they put it in there. But so yeah, the uh, the bar goes way up there, so your hangers go up high. You get a lot of space for long clothes. I'm short, so I don't have those, but Lyle, I'm sure you do. Got the mirror. Look at that. Got the mirror and everything. Let's see what we can do. Hi, Mom. <laughs> there right. you go. Yeah, so above that, same thing as you'd have over there. Yep, and another one of those areas. There you go. No cigarette lighter in this one, though. That's all right. We do have a cigarette lighter over here. Along with another light. Built-in TV mount, but only for a 24 inch, which is a bummer. So they're gonna take that out, put in another TV mount that I bought, and put in the uh, the 32 inch TV. Nice big windows. Nice. All right. What else we got? Storage? More storage? Yeah, you know what? I put my computer bag in one of those. There you go. Freightliner, that's one really, another big advantage to this compared to the Freightliner. The Freightliner has the gap there, and you can put stuff there, but every time you lift the bunk up, all that stuff falls into the bunk. And you gotta deal with it. It's a pain in the butt. This actually has trays. That is really, really nice. I like that. All right, so the bunk is a folding bunk. You have a latch over here. You just pull on the latch, and it comes down. He has the bed folded up. Uh, but that will fold down and then you have this you know if you needed it so what I just used this for was a bunch of storage I, do, I didn't even have the mattress up here until I had the co-driver I just used to store things up here and you know this is primarily where everything was to be honest with you. Yep, exactly and that's uh, same in the Freightliner um, except the Freightliner it folds all the way up uh, it doesn't fold halfway up the nice thing about this folding halfway up, go ahead and fold it. You can see it encompasses that whole mattress. So that is huge, deep storage right there. That's a lot of storage uh, if you want to keep it up and have deep storage, or you can put it down. Go ahead and put it down. And, uh, and you can have more shallow storage here. I'm gonna do the same thing and remove the, uh, the, the mattress and, and have storage. Check this out. The ladder, the ladder, slide that out there we go it doesn't quite hit the ground but that's okay it's meant to to hang on there but that is more much more convenient than the uh, Freightliner ladder which I was always hitting my head on just fold, go ahead and fold that thing back up look at that completely 100% out of the way I also like the fact that you don't absolutely have to have the ladder you got that little step right there so go ahead and step on up there Look at that and you can actually access just about everything in that bunk also the bunk up top is much larger than the bunk in the Freightliner uh, the Freightliner bunk is much smaller than even the bottom size bed um, so you don't have as much storage in this one you've got much more storage area right up here so I think that's gonna help make up the difference in the storage and it's great if you wanted to get in some little physical fitness activities you could you know get you some of this going on you know what i mean if you want. <laughs> there you go man give me some ideas oh, there uh-huh there you go uh the bed size let's talk about this bed size here it is larger than the freightliner which i guess is good but it's 42 by 80 which is larger than a twin xl which is uh 37 by 80 and uh much smaller than a full so you have to custom order sheets for this or get them at the prime store or something like that you cannot find sheets for this at walmart um 
what I'm going to end up doing is bringing my own mattress in here, which is that twin XL from the Freightliner. It'll give me three extra inches. It'll be three extra inches right here. Not a big deal, I don't think. That way I can have the sheets. I'll have a bigger mattress. But check this out. This is something I noticed different than the Freightliner. So check this out. I'm going to move these out of the way. Lift the mattress. See where those hinges are right there? Yep. Okay. On the Freightliner, the hinges are at the bottom. Why is that a big deal? Because, let's, let me have you go ahead and uh, uh, lift this bunk here. When you lift the bunk up, it hinges at the top, which means you can have a thicker mattress here without it getting in the way of lifting the bunk. In the Freightliner, I've got a thicker mattress. My mattress is about yay thick. And yeah, trying to lift that bunk, forget it. It will not stay up. It's a pain in the butt. This one, not a big deal. So I really, really like that. All right. Speaking about lifting the bunk, let's check out the bunk. The under bunk storage. All right, I got some crap in there. <laughs> if, you, if you turn the phone around, that, that's the speaker right there. Oh, look at that. There's your subwoofer right there. That's a good size uh, subwoofer right there. I cannot wait to check that Not out. Not to nitpick, the triangles that come with this aren't those little thin and flimsy triangles. Those things got some weight to them right there. There you go. Which matters when you actually have to use the triangles and not just show them off the DOT. Good, good. Right on. And you can see it is one big, long space here. This right here is just the duct work for the AC uh, that it goes under all the way through so you can fit a lot more stuff in here uh also you don't have the big in the, in the freight liner you have that big ac system in there that took up a whole bunch of space here it's tucked in the corner hardly takes up any space it's nice much nicer uh let's see in the freight liner you had the speaking of the ac you had two vents right here nothing on this side and you had one small vent up here for up up, uh, up top and one vent down there by the floor here you've got one vent not adjustable like the Freightliner but you've got a vent on this side a vent on this side and then for up top a vent up there and a vent up there mm -hmm. and I've tr I've tested this out you get a lot more cooling effect in this truck than you did with the Freightliner, that's for sure. And then you're gonna have a separate vent when they get the APU hooked up. Oh yeah, the, the bunk heater. Yeah. Yeah, you'll have a bunk heater uh, vent uh, that'll be about right there uh, for the heat, and that thing generates a lot of heat. All right. Uh, there are window covers for the, the covers. They're the snap style. I'm not a fan of those. Uh, Freightliner has the same thing. Uh, but these are good size windows right here. And you can get an air dam for the door that will make it to where when you open the uh, the, the baggage door, uh, you'll only have access to the bottom so that air isn't coming in and out of, of uh, here. Air, dust, dirt, cold, all that stuff isn't coming in and out right by your bed. Uh, so that's going to be convenient. And then you can always remove it. Uh, it snaps on, snaps in place. You can always remove it uh, if you do need that larger access. Um, I like the material in here too. Nice and soft, plush. It just looks, it looks nice. This thing just looks nice. I really like it. All right, speakers up there. All right, Lyle, final thoughts. You are gonna love this truck. I'm just telling you, you know, I, I, could, I couldn't have been happier with my choice to get a brand new Peterbilt and I'm sure that uh, after it's going to be even more noticeable to you some of these differences in some of them you know the lack of storage things like that but as far as the the ride goes it's going to be something that you're going to notice right off the bat uh, as a plus to this like I was telling you that last night when I first went from my first trainer's Peterbilt to my second trainer's uh, Cascadia I actually thought there was something wrong with the truck it was bouncing around so much I just wasn't used to it so I thought there was something wrong with it and he just said no it's just the way it drives so 
You're going to notice that right off the bat. Man, I cannot wait, man. I cannot wait. All right, well, Lyle, No Hippie Trucking and Transport. Please make sure to check out his channel. This guy is intelligent. I'm telling you, uh, financial background, he knows what he's talking about. Um, I've watched every single one of his videos, and they are they're, they're good, good, solid information, good, trustworthy stuff, man. So thank you very much for having a good YouTube channel out there. And one thing to remember... It's all about the ink, baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Right on, man. All right, so stay tuned here. Don't don't click off yet. We are going to uh, uh, go ahead and go outside again and take a look at the engine and give you guys a rundown of the engine for you guys. There we go. Listen to our purr, baby. Check out the other side here. Oh, look at that logo. That just looks sweet. Oh yeah, look at that. All right, I know, I know. Listening to it is great. Seeing it is fantastic, but you want more than that. You want info, you want details, don't you? Well, let's go ahead and turn this off here. And let me introduce you to the man himself, Seth Elliott. This guy works right over here at Peterbilt. He works in the uh, the fleet division, right, for, for Prime? Correct. All right, and man, I have talked to this guy at least 200 Two times. times. <laughs> yeah, at least 200 times. Uh, he has been fantastic, extremely helpful, uh, especially in getting this truck. Uh, we were looking at finance options, getting a, you know, getting my own truck and everything. Man, this guy's got just tons of information. So I really wanted to bring him out here, introduce him to everybody, and uh, he's going to actually tell you guys a bit about the engine. Go for it. All right, thanks, JJ. Uh, my name is Seth Elliott with uh, TLG Springfield, and uh, we sell uh, a bunch of these new 579 Ultra Lofts to Prime. So this truck is equipped with the uh, Packard MX-13. Uh, it's got a 455 horsepower and 1650 uh, foot-pounds of torque. It also has the 12-speed uh, automatic transmission, which has been a huge success for us. And uh, we're just glad to have JJ and uh, Peterbilt. Right on. Yeah, it's definitely a big change so far from the Freightliner. Uh, but uh, so far, I have absolutely noticed a smoother be a, ride. Be a learning and, curve. So, but yeah, you'll have a nice, quiet, smooth ride. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So there it is, everybody. You've got the details. And man, so far, I'm loving this truck. Uh, there's some things to get used to. There are some differences that I'll be going over in uh, in a different video. But uh, man, this is nice. So, all right, everybody. You know the drill by now. If you've watched any of my videos, click on my face. Click on my face and see what happens. You see my face right there? Click on it. Click on my face. Something special will happen. Subscribe. Give it a thumbs up if you like this video. And I will talk to you all later. Bye. If you insist on the manual transmission, you're going to just have to go with the Prime Classics. <laughs>